Xin Chao. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? We have the best news we've had in over two years for Vietnam. It is official. I am not a clickbaiter and make you wait. Vietnam is officially opening on the 15th of March. That comes with the red stamp approval from the Prime Minister. The documentation is there. I'll try to include a picture of it now, even though it's still in Vietnamese. I have a translated English one. Pretty much everything we talked about in this last update, we're at the palace, Kingdom Palace. They're under renovation, so it's closed, but still a beautiful area. So, it's, it's official, guys. We can make shit happen on March 15th. What do we know what it's going to look like? And we're going to unpack a bunch of information. Do we know exactly what it's going to look like? No, but we should today, tomorrow, or the next day. They're going to uh, officially outline the details of it. But they've officially approved that March 15th is the date. And that's so everything can get ready. All the you know hotels, accommodations, all these places can get ready ahead of time. It's going to be insane. Wee Vane's going to get dirty real dirty it's gonna be good times man i'm super stoked to see that this is the possibility of of it's not a possibility it's a fact now so people are requesting to see what i'm filming not my face we are on the older camera the sony x3000 so you know it doesn't do as well not pointed on my face but i give the people what they want this camera's been performing super well on this trip so we do have quite a few ZV-1 videos, but yeah, let's continue on with this news. This is what you're here for. Vietnam is officially opening. Yes, it's official on March 15th. There is no more uh, proposals. They're still proposing exactly what the rule set's gonna be. My guess is gonna be what we talked about yesterday, the one day quarantine, no tour group. You can get your own visa. Visas like it was pre-pandemic, so all the countries, however you got your visa before, it will be like the pre-pandemic. Once I get across the street here on the river, and we're walking, this is not the Mekong River, this is the river that goes the opposite way. There's two rivers here. I was naive when I got here. Comment section, let me know in a real hurry. I was wrong. <laughs> Which I appreciate you guys for that. Beautiful park though, right? Nice shot of this. So the visa situation is going to be like it was pre-pandemic. People were only getting 90 days on their little tour guide visa thing. I heard from a bunch of people. So even if you booked that expensive tour guide, you had to leave after 90 days, which nah. Now you should be able to do your one year tourist or one year business. People ask me which visa to get. If you're serious about living here and you're going to start a business, it's much easier to take a business one year and turn it into something else than it is a tourist one. If you try to turn your tourist one into something else, generally you have to do a visa run and leave the country. So if you're going to be here for a while, no. And you don't want to change. We got a traffic here, traffic here. Just hit the Vietnamese street crossing. Oh, this is where all the birds are, man. I don't want to get shit on So it's gonna be visa situation as normal. I don't know, I think in the next few days they're, they're gonna probably start issuing them. I'm not a big a visa on arrival guy unless I'm doing something last minute. So if I was to be getting the one year visa, I would do it ahead of time through the government embassy website, which I have a video on. Just Google or, uh, yeah, you can even Google fat and broke, how to get Vietnam visa or type into YouTube and you'll see. That's the process I recommend for getting a visa. Then there's no, no possible problems when you arrive. And like I said, I would get the business visa if you plan to stay here and actually do some kind of business. It's much easier to turn into another type of thing than it is a tourist visa. A tourist visa, you have to go out of the country to change into something else. So, just an FYI. Thought I'd give you that information. So it's, it's doing a one day quarantine. If you're not vaccinated, you have to have proof of recovery. So you have to have proof of, of infection and recovery. I don't think they're just going to take your word of mouth on it. And I do believe you have to take that proof of recovery and upload it to the PC COVID app, which there is an upload section now. 
Same with your vaccine. If you have your vaccine, uh, you upload it to that app and then it gets approved. So these are the steps you're gonna wanna take. So far they're saying, as we heard yesterday, an antigen test instead of a PCR test, which is a whole heck of a lot better than taking a PCR test. As you'll see when I get back to Vietnam, we'll talk about that. I don't know when I'll be back in Vietnam, hopefully soon. Time will tell on that. Also, you will need health insurance for COVID treatment if you get COVID. Now, it's very easy to get international health insurance. It's not very expensive. I recommend you do it anyways, especially in a country like this. In Vietnam, you could get hit by a car or on your motorbike. You could get injured on a grab driver motorbike. Sure, it, it doesn't happen all the time, but possibilities there and you don't want to be paying out of pocket for that stuff. You want to have coverage, so look that up on Google. Make sure you get that and you'll be in good, good working order. I think it's going to be absolutely insane once they open on the 15th. I think you're going to see a lot of people booking that. A lot of people want to get into Vietnam. So it's a very exciting time, you know. They finally aren't dragging the wheels anymore. You know, as you can see, Cambodia is wide open. There's no feet dragging in Cambodia right now. There's just uh, drag and sweat in my ass off. I don't know what he's selling. Back off. Making me sweat in my titties. She's got street food. So let's read the official uh, letter that they signed off on. It's going to sound very similar to what we talked about yesterday. So. Let's give it a rip tater chip so they they actually did this on the morning they had the meeting on the morning of the 15th and then they did the letter on the 16th last night and then they released it and then they really <coughs> they released it today on the 17th at noon so about four hours ago on the morning of the 15th the government headquarters Vu Duke Dam chaired a meeting to discuss. Attending the meeting was the Ministry of Culture and Sports. We already talked about that yesterday. Hold on here. We had so many different documents here. Agree with the proposal of the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism and the opinions of ministries and agencies the meeting of the time to reopen tourism activities under new normal conditions in accordance with the spirit of in accordance with the spirit of direction of the government, the Prime Minister on flexibility, adapting safety and effectively controlling the COVID-19 epidemic from March 15th. Assume the prime responsibility for and coordinate with relevant ministries and agencies in agreeing on contents and regulations on welcoming international tourists finalize and urgently announce the plan to reopen the tourism activities with detailed instructions for units and localities to actively organize the implementation. Work specifically with the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and relevant ministries and sectors to urgently report in detail to the government and Prime Minister on visa policies applicable to international tourists entry into Vietnam. So. They want to get the guidelines out as soon as possible. So if, if you get my drift, that's, that's what they signed off on. They signed off on the agreement to open on March 15th. The official stamp is on that document. And now they want to urgently get out all the information so people can plan accordingly and know what kind of visa they can get. They already gave a brief outline on what that's gonna look like. We've gone over that pretty much in the beginning of this video and during this video. But it looks like visa as normal pre-COVID, that is what they're trying to pitch right now. It looks like a one day quarantine, which I think they'll probably ditch. Doesn't make a lot of sense to do one day quarantine. A rapid uh, antigen test once you arrive at your hotel, I think is sufficient. I don't think you need to do, I think they could even do like what they do in uh, Cambodia and just do the rapid test at the airport. I mean, I don't know how that would work with the influx. I think you're going to see a lot more people coming to Vietnam than you would to Cambodia. So that's fine. Even if it's a day at the hotel, you're going to be jet lagged anyways. So, I mean, 
I don't think losing a day is entirely that big of a deal. Get a nice hotel, enjoy the room service. If you're with your significant owner, practice baby making. Not a big deal. Or if you're by yourself, practice hand making. <laughs> the little kids, little thieves. These kids will steal your shit. These are like the type of kids that stole Chris's shit. Little ass kids. They're like little thieves. I'm not saying all kids are thieves, but... You can put your bag down and turn your back, your shit's gone. It's kind of the same in Vietnam, though. Like, he thinks the crime's worse here. I'm like, dude, if you went to a park like that and put your bag down, turned your back, and had headphones on, that shit's gone. Oh, there's a Yahoo in here doing stretches and, like, little tiny shorts. It looks like a, a real special one. So pretty much now we're in the, the, the waiting game for these next few days to see what they officially release for the documentation on this stuff. Now I'm pretty excited. I think this is an excellent step forward. It's gonna be crazy seeing backpackers and stuff again. There's an enormous amount of backpackers here. So like, I imagine we were gonna see the same thing on Saigon again, all the backpackers on Boy Ving. And I imagine we'll see a lot of the businesses reopening again and getting rented out and things prospering and, and flourishing again. I think the less rules they make about this thing, the more successful that it will be. Personally, I would ditch all this stuff. And I'm talking about uh, Vietnam. In Vietnam, Omicron's, not even Omicron, this thing's pretty much a common cold because 98 Eight, 95 percent of people have both vaccines and like some 80 85 percent already have the third jab and they're already offering like people the fourth jab I declined it because I got my third jab in the beginning of January why would I get the, the fourth jab so soon I don't need it that soon so there's a, a high availability of vaccine everybody's taking it so I don't see there to be too big of a precaution if Omicron did sweep through, it's more of like a cold and a flu. Sure, it still kills people. Sure, you have a kind of high death rate in America still because you have so many people that shows not the vax, so they don't want the experimental drug in their body, yada, yada, yada. If you don't want the vax, I don't care, don't take it. That's your thing, not my thing. I could give two shits less, as I've said a dozen times. People seem to think I'm like pro one way or another. I don't care. As long as it doesn't affect me, I don't care. But there is an option for you to come over if you're not vaxxed. So you have to have proof that you have recovered within six months. So if it's longer than six months, I don't know what to tell you. They're going to want you to be vaccinated. And I don't know too many people that have had COVID that have proof that they recovered from it. I, I think proof would be AKA you took a test, you were negative or positive. You went back and took a test again and you were negative and it's signed off by a doctor. I'm just guessing. I don't know how strict that'll be. You should be able to move relatively freely around Vietnam with that. They've kind of ditched the, the uh, checking the app for vaccine stuff. They used to for months, it was heavily checked every single place you went, restaurants, malls anywhere now it's it's much less uh windway flower festival checked and i had a few other places check me in cambodia i had a few clubs check me a few different kind of clubs like uh, party clubs which i found to be odd and that was it for cambodia now when i did go to nachang i was checked every single place but I haven't been back there since. That was a month or two ago, so. I'm gonna try to get over to Da Nang and Na Chang before we travel to the Philippines. The Philippines is gonna be delayed now because I ended up having to be here longer. So now I have to save up more money for that trip. I live within my means, so it's a matter of saving then being able to do something. So I have to save up a certain amount of money and I won't do another trip until it's just an antigen chest to get back in, which looks like by the Feb 15th of February, or, uh, March, that's gonna be no problem. 
The PCR test is a complete joke and waste of money. They're running a racket on that shit here. Cambodia is disgusting on their PCR test, to be honest with you. It's like 80 to $200. Cheapest one's 80, and it's booked like a month ahead of time. I'm like, how am I gonna know when to book my PCR? I'm like, do you know how stupid that sounds to the lady? And I'm like, how can you be booked? Why, why are you guys so unorganized with this PCR test, man? It takes minutes in Saigon, but it somehow takes hours here. It's, and there's only like four places that do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the video, guys. I think it's time to get excited. The light's at the end of the tunnel. This is the best news we've heard in years. Finally, Vietnam is getting back to normal and, and ditching their keep everyone out COVID. Japan is also gonna announce regulation change today. So if you're looking to get in Japan, probably look for a J Japan YouTuber that does news because I think that news came out today as this video will come out today. So it looks like Japan's lifting restrictions as well as they should. Once you have a high vaccination rate, this thing isn't gonna send you to the hospital or put you on life support, so. And that's proof in the facts and the statistics. So, that's the video, guys. I hope you guys found that interesting. If you did, there's links in the description on how to support the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it if you did that. If you liked the video, smash that like button. If you want to comment, comment. If you didn't like the video, destroy the, the dislike button. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that, guys. Stay frosty. See you in Vietnam on March 15th. Peace out.